Previously, we've looked at the impedance of a resistor. In this example, let's take a look at the impedance uh, of an inductor in an AC circuit. So just as a quick recall, remember that the impedance is the relationship between the voltage and current uh, caused or across some sort of component. So when we are looking at the impedance of the inductor, what we want to find out is both the voltage across that inductor and the current across that inductor and see how those relationships vary. So to start, let's assume that we have an inductor in our circuit here. It has some inductance L and that because of the voltage source, there is some sort of current flowing through this inductor. And so as with a lot of our current sources, let's just assume that it has some magnitude flowing across it and that it is a time varying signal. Now from what we've seen before, we can uh, take this time varying signal and break it out with um, Euler's identity to look like the following. So we get the magnitude of the current and then what's inside of the cosine function ends up as exponents for our expression. Now this relationship right here will provide us our current function, but what we need to know now is what is the relationship with voltage. And so thankfully for an inductor, we can remember that the voltage across an inductor is the derivative of the current times the inductance. So what we can do is take the derivative of this function here and find out what our voltage function is. And remember that this derivative is going to be relative to time, so a lot of these elements that are in the upper part of this expression are actually just going to stay outside of the derivative and nothing will actually happen to them. So the derivative itself is rather straightforward in that you're only taking the derivative of just a simple exponential. And if you can remember back to your uh, first calculus classes, uh, the derivative of an exponential is the derivative of the exponent, kind of moved down to the front. So this really, really long expression ends up reducing itself to just being this right here. And so there, there are tons of terms in this, but we're gonna, we're gonna make them all magically cancel out in just a second. But up here at the top, this function up here is our current function, and this function right here is our uh, voltage function. So if we take these two expressions and we just divide the voltage expression by the current expression, a lot and a lot of these terms are gonna cancel out. And you can see that both, um, both functions share uh, this expression and this expression, so they're gonna cancel out. And both functions share this expression and this expression up here, so they're going to cancel out with well. And a lot and a lot of these elements are gonna eventually cancel out and leave us that the phasor of an inductor is simply this element right here. And so what this means right here is that the, the phasor of an inductor is a little bit more complicated than the phasor of a resistor. As we saw for the resistor, its phasor was only based on its resistance, but here we have not only the inductance for the inductor, but a function of frequency, and then our imaginary component for J. Um, and so what this means is that the behavior of this inductor in the circuit is going to vary upon the frequency of this source right here. And so as the frequency of that source changes, the impact of this inductor will change in the circuit as well. So let's do some quick checks to see if this relationship for the impedance uh, makes sense. Previously, we've discussed impedance as sort of uh, um, AC, sort of complex understanding of resistance. But let's see if this, our intuitive understandings of how an inductor behaves carries over into this field. So let's imagine that we take this um, frequency of the circuit and let's push it to different values. And so what happens to our impedance when our frequency is zero, meaning that the circuit, not that it's off, but not that it's oscillating, it's just not oscillating at all. And in this situation, our impedance is going to be zero. And if you recall back 
to what the behavior of a inductor was in a DC circuit, we said that it becomes a short circuit. And so this phaser right here is capturing that behavior because in a DC situation, the frequency is zero. Like a nine volt source is constantly nine volts. It's not oscillating at all. So this frequency going to zero is a DC condition. And this impedance being zero right here is implying that the inductor is becoming a short circuit. And this idea that at very, very low frequencies, the inductor becomes a short circuit is aligned with our original understanding um, that in a DC situation, our inductor becomes a short circuit and basically just disappears from the circuit. Now, in the same way that we looked at the frequency going to zero, let's examine what happens when the frequency is really high. So let's say the frequency as it moves towards infinity. And this implies a situation where a circuit's moving extremely rapidly, like the signals coming in are very, very high frequency, and the circuit is rapidly changing. So if I plug in an infinite term here, well, my result is going to go to infinity because anything multiplied by infinity is infinity. And so if our impedance is sort of a, an understanding of resistance, then something with infinite impedance or infinite resistance is an open circuit. So what this means is that at super high frequencies, our inductor just shuts down and not that it becomes a short circuit, but it just prevents all current flows from flowing between it. And if you think back to our original discussion of what an inductor is, this inductor is a home for a bunch of magnetic fields that are flowing through the inductor. And we said that the current through an inductor that the current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously, that it resisted instantaneous change in current. This is exactly what would be happening in this condition where we have infinite frequency. So if we're infinitely changing our voltages up and down and up and down, there's going to be an infinite attempt to change the current and the inductor is going to resist that current and resist that change. So at extremely high frequencies, our inductor becomes an open circuit as it's constantly resisting that change in the circuit. So behavior. as a quick summary, the impedance of our inductor is a complex relationship that deals with not only its inductance, but also the frequency of the circuit driving it. So if I happen to have an inductor that was connected to a low frequency source, then this inductor would become a short circuit and effectively disappear from the circuit. If I, in the same way, happen to have my inductor connected to something that was a very high frequency source, then that inductor would resist all of the changes that are induced by that source and become an open circuit. Overall, the behavior of the inductor's impedance as a function of frequency is a rather linear relationship, and so it starts off here at zero, but as the frequency climbs, uh, so does its impedance. So while we may never reach an infinite frequency response, um, the greater the frequency response, the greater the impedance uh, implied by the inductor, and then the lower the frequency of the circuit, the less that the inductor does, and it actually a very extremely low frequency circuits, like a DC situation, becomes an open circuit.